I find it ironic that the Eagles turn to the guy that they torched for their only Isn't Super Bowl ironic, championship. Don't you think? It yeah, is. Yeah. It is ironic. Welcome back. Midday show. 215-592-9494. Let's get to the phone lines here. Your reaction to all this. Both Hugh and I think this is a panicky move. I do see the merit in it, and I think it could work out to be a good thing. But it feels panicky. The Eagles switch coordinators on defense, switch the play caller on defense. Sean Desai out. Matt Patricia in. We got a game tonight. Eagles and the Seahawks. And in a few minutes, I'm going to give you a recent example where a team did this very similar thing, and it worked out and led to a championship. Ron in Monco. Good morning, Ron. Ron. Jiggle out. Ron. You. He said jiggle. What's the up, buddy? First shoe, the first shoe has dropped. My prediction is on pace. It's, it's right where I right where I figured it would be. So we got the first shoe to drop. Joe, is this starting to feel like something that uh, – we kind of went through a few years back. Yes, it is. It's starting, ah, to, it's starting to feel like the it, head coach really, being, yeah, like the head coach is being undermined exactly, by the front it's, office. It's exactly what it is. The dynamic has not changed between the ivory tower and the head coaching and the coaches. It's the same thing, and it's all coming apart. And it's and this is how it's gotten down to the locker room, and it's gotten onto the field, and it's spread. Okay, and this is this is it. I mean, I think they'll make it to the end of the year, but they're not going to make it past that because it, it it is what it is. Now, hey, Joe, remember 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 uh, Doug Peterson got up there and he was definitive on a couple of answers, and then two days later he he came back and he, he was like, well, you know, I, I kind of didn't mean that. You know, that's because. They told him, no, we're not doing that. Well, you're doing this. Yeah, it was Mike Groh, okay. Ron. It was, it was his offensive quarter, Mike Groh, right after the playoff game they lost to Seattle 2019. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he said, he, said right. he would be back, and two days later he was fired. <laughs> yeah, he was fired. Right. It's the same exact thing. It's a shame. I thought that we had moved away from it. You know, you, you were not here for this. I was not, but, but I've, I've heard stories. You're going to, but don't worry. It's not going to be boring around here for the next two years. I promise you, you, your head will spin when you see what's about to happen here. Okay? Now, my biggest concern, again, and it will remain my biggest concern, that my, that my quarterback, okay, gets hurt in the middle of this. Okay? That's what I'm concerned about because it's found its way to the field. And as you can see, you see how this kid has looked. He's looked lost. He's looked lost, and it's because of what these coaches are, what they're not doing, and what they are doing, and it's it's a shame. It's a shame because we got we got a lot of talent on this team. We got a good quarterback, a better than a good quarterback. He needs direction. He needs reins on him. I mean, he's you know he's he's a stallion, man. You got to control this kid, or else he's going to get himself kid killed. And if, and here's another thing. Here's another thing. Who, who, who leaves the the quarterback, the, your golden boy, in when you're getting trounced? Yeah, Sirianni. Totally yeah, Sirianni did that a few weeks ago, and, and I I thought that was ridiculous. Ron, appreciate the phone call as always. A cheery phone call from. Well, Ron, Ron. there's he's, a lot to digest. He's patting himself on the back. He, there's he, a lot he, to digest. He saw this coming, and he thinks Sirianni's tenure is on shaky ground. Hope you're I, happy, Ron. I'll tell you what, I, I'm going to be fascinated tonight after the game. Now, depending on how the game goes, it'll probably be a different kind of set of questions. Right, Jalen plays, Jalen does the play, the Mariota stuff. We'll get into that, and you know we'll see tonight. But let's just say, whatever. When, when the questions start tonight, Hugh, what happened? What? Why would you make the move? Did you make the move? I, I can't wait to hear how Sirianni answers it because, Hugh, we played it in the first segment. We have the head coach last week saying he's not going to make a move. He trusts Sean Desai, and now Sean Desai is not calling the plays on defense. So something changed here. I think the best way to save your face in this situation is just say it was fluid. And things changed, ebb and flow of the season, and things changed on the fly. That's the only thing you can say in this situation because, to your point, we're all speculating yep. on what the heck happened between Monday and Saturday. It was all good just a week ago. You know, when we talk about before we played that Dallas game, how everything seemed fine and he was real strong on the fact that, you know, he didn't feel like his defense coordinator needed to be singled out or anything like that. You just can't blame one person. The message has changed. The message has changed. The message has changed drastically because it is to a lot of people there. It it does feel like the defensive coordinator 
is the scapegoat. Of course he is. And 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 I say that because of this. The fact that Bayard has not been here that long. Has not been here that long. But he has enough cachet that he can come in and say, "Yo, let me let me do the let me do the uh secondary scouting uh report." Mm-hmm. He a coach? No. I've never I've never heard of anything like that. That is interesting to me. And not only that, all of this happened in on a Saturday. Well, the buyers thing was early in the week, but everything else that happened that transpired is on a Saturday. That tells me that number one, they didn't want to answer questions about what they were trying to do. They didn't want a whole week of being distracted yep. from that. So what what is that saying? It's better to ask for for permission. It's better to ask for forgiveness than yeah. than permission. Yeah, because permission you get no, but yeah, forget, yeah, you, yeah. You do it and you're like, well, yeah. I, so man, that's I'm sorry. What it, that's what it is. So 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 it was one of those things where they felt they didn't have they didn't want to deal with the media, and you know they just decided to do what they did. And on top of that, again, the fact that Slay has been playing with this knee injury or this knee whatever this knee issue is, he's been playing with it all year long, and he decides on a Saturday. Nah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get my knee, get my knee scope. Yeah, I'll see you guys in a few weeks. So I, I heard Elliot this morning say this, and I agree with him. I actually think the Eagles made it worse by the timing. If if they had come out on Wednesday and said we're gonna make a change of coordinator, this happens in the NFL. The the, the Bills did this six weeks ago, and it, you know they moved on. Everyone moved on. It was a couple days like, oh boy, what's going on in Buffalo? And they've played well since then. Their offense has been better since Joe Brady became the coordinator rather than uh, Ken Dorsey. This happens in the NFL. This isn't the but. Hugh, you said it. They didn't want to answer questions. Mm-hmm. Think about when the news broke yesterday. You think this is any coincidence that Jake Glazer had this report as the Eagles boarded a six-hour flight to, to Seattle and they won't speak again until after a game? Yeah, because you're no not talking about it. And you saw even John Clark was trying to figure out the, the story from afar yeah. when he was in Seattle. It's the same thing as the Doug thing we brought up. He, he said, Mike Rose, my coordinator. They fired him two days later. I believe if my timeline is right back then, Doug didn't speak again until the coaches' breakfast they have in the whatever it is in March or whatever. Like it was months later, he spoke. So like you just you throw something out there, no one could say anything. You can't really ask real questions for days or, or obviously in that situation, months at a time. I don't think that is a coincidence. Two one five five nine two ninety four ninety four. It feels panicky. We both feel it. Though I do think this could actually be for the good. Steve in Egg Harbor Township. What's up, Steve? Yeah, what's going on? I mean, this is, I mean, you have to be blind not to see that this is definitely not a Nick Sirianni move or this will be major contradiction to what he did. This is exactly what happened with Doug Peterson when he went to his press conference and said, Ark, my, I, I picked my coordinators and these are the guys I'm staying with. And then the next day they were both fired. I mean, come on. This is pretty obvious. And, and I'm so tired of Slay. Uh, it's not even funny. It's time to get rid of this bum at the end of the year. I don't care what anybody says. When you give up 109 points in three games, you cannot, you cannot come out and sit there and say, I played well. Because if he was a shutdown corner or even a good corner, he could take away at least a third of the field like a Jalen Ramsey, which he cannot do anymore. His days are beyond him. Time to cut him loose. And I think he's done here. Steve, I, th- I think we're I seeing think he, the last. He it's inadvertently like, did that when he yep. had the surgery at the time he had it. That's that, no I'm sorry. That that's a taboo. Like you don't you don't do that. And, and and I don't know how bad. Like this is me talking from the perspective of an old head player. If you could play, it, the timing of this surgery is all wrong. It is. And you were awesome, my man. I just want to let you know. I remember you. I'm 62, so I saw you in your prime. You were awesome. I loved every time I saw you on the field. You were an animal. And I loved what you did to Thomas in Chicago. They should be doing more of that, in my opinion. <laughs> Steve, we appreciate the phone call. I agree with – my first thought when I saw the Slay News is his time as an Eagle is about to be over. Yeah. He, I think they're going to have two new starting corners next year. I mean, Bradbury is, is, cook, is, is about to be cooked. And Slay – has not been bad this year, but I also think we're getting in the wrong side of, of 30. He's just going to get worse as years go on. And, like, I, I'm still bothered by Friday. The idea that he had, does his podcast or whatever, and I know there's probably more to it than we heard, but we saw a clip, and we heard a clip from his podcast about how, how well he played last week as they gave up 33 points that got torched by Dallas. Dude, I don't care, and I don't want to hear it. So I, I I think we're at the end of the Darius Slay thing. All right, let me, let me throw this in there because I, I do think, although – this is panicky, and I think a lot of us feel that today. Yeah, I mean, listen, this is the Eagles hitting the button, not even me this time. They're hitting the button. 
there is a, a chance this turns out to be a really good move for the Eagles. Matt Burke, former center for the Baltimore Ravens, we had him on the show about a week and a half ago. And listen to what he said about how teams can change within a season, including his Ravens team, 2012, that won the Super Bowl. Well, last year it seems like Philly just kind of steamrolled yes. through everything, right? And you're mm-hmm. blowing people out and everybody's having fun. And this year it's been a little bit more of a struggle. And I actually think that's probably a good thing if I'm an Eagles fan. I mean, Hugh, you, you know, you can't play great for 16 or now 17 no, you can't. games. You it, go it gets up, ugly. Yeah, you go sometimes. up and down. And when you don't play your best football early on, or you're always going to hit a, a, a bad patch. I, mean, I remember my last year in Baltimore, we won it. We lost four of our last five games. And they always talk about well, the teams that play the best in December, you know, they're the teams that go on. We played our worst football in December, but it's a little bit of a wake-up call. So I think if I, if I want to say the glass is half full and I'm an Eagles fan, I'm saying it's been a struggle, still found ways to win games, win a lot of games. I mean, you're 10-2. and two. So that was Matt Burke with us a couple weeks ago, right? And, and he's talking about the 2012 Ravens. He was on. They won the Super Bowl. He thought about it. December was a struggle. Listen to this parallel. The, the Ravens were 9-4. and four. Eagles, obviously, 10-3. and three. The Ravens. We're in first place at 9-4. and four. They had had back-to-back losses. You know what they did, Hugh, after their 13th game? They fired their offensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. They fired Cam Cameron, and they put in Jim Caldwell, who was the quarterback's coach at the time, and they made him the coordinator. Six, seven, eight weeks later, whatever it was, Joe Flacco plays the best football of his life under a new coordinator. They win the Super Bowl. So, I mean, it, it, we, this was like, what, 12, 13 years ago? Yeah. It's not that 11 years ago. It's not that long ago. We saw a team fire a coordinator while they're winning. I mean, they were 9-4, and four, Eagles 10-3, and three, obviously playoff teams. So it, this could work. I'm not sure it's going to, but it could. Yeah, and I give you that, Joe. I mean, that, there are some facts there that I, I cannot deny, but, but here's the thing. I, I don't recall that moment, and I wasn't, you know, covering that team. But this feels – with everything that's been said and the way that we've been led to believe that there's nothing wrong, that this feels like it's it's a panic move and it was a move not made by the head coach. So like, I agree with you, Hugh, and here's the one difference, right, because we're making a comparison. Mm-hmm. That one was done on a Monday after their second because it could, And here's the reason why you do stuff like this on a Monday. You get prepared for the week, so there's nothing – different there's no communication lapses anything like that you give yourself time to prepare for the week with a new coordinator new probably not new terminology but just different way of doing things the fact that that Bayard is is the guy that is is has done the game plan in the secondary to me blows my mind he hasn't been here that long we were just talking about a few weeks ago him just getting up to speed to the concepts that we were running here. Now all of a sudden, he's he's the guy that's done the game plan for the secondary. Interesting.